Hi everyone, I am Hằng and uh, I will continue with the work and energy. In this, in previous video, we had one, two, three, four points here. And in this video, I will talk about the potential energy, mechanical energy, and conservation of mechanical energy. Now we quickly move to that. topic is right here firstly I want to remind about the conservative forces remember that a conservative forces is um, when you calculate the work based on that force so the work just depends on the initial and the final positions it doesn't depend on the way the path that the object move the, the object moves from um, initial position to the final position. Now we calculate the work done by gravitational forces. Suppose that we have the Earth here and the object here. This one is the surface of the Earth. So this one it have a mass is uh, M here and this one the mass is capital M. So we have a uh, the this initial position here we have R1 and final position here we have R2 and if the object move by this curve so we consider at this position we have a gravitational forces point to the center of the earth like this and this one is the ds that the the distance that the object moves on it so how do we calculate the work? We also based on the definition, we get the force time to the distance. But in this case, we have to divide the distance in many small pieces because the force always change and uh, the distance is a curve, it's not a straight line. Why I say the force is, uh, why I say the force change? Changes are always changes because you see, this one is a gravitational forces, and this one is a formula for gravitational forces. G is a, a constant. M is the mass of the Earth. And this M, small m here, is the mass of the object. Just only R is the distance from the object to the, the Earth. Here, it, it always changes. Therefore, Fox is not a constant. And moreover, you can pick up randomly the path from one to two. Therefore, the distance is not a straight uh, line. And therefore, we have to apply this formula. So based on this formula, if you want to calculate the work from one to two, you have to do the integrate integration from, um, uh, from here and from here, you have uh, uh, the work equal this integration when take a look here you have a g m capital m and small m uh, are constants uh, so you don't care about it you just focus on r here r square you do the integration and you have this formula and now um, based on this formula i uh, my definition so not my uh, people define and call this one is a potential energy potential energy this one potential energy at the position r2 this one potential energy at position r1 so uh, we have formula for poten uh, potential energy is g capital m m and distance here is a defi uh, definition of potential energy take a look here so here we have a final potential energy and here we have initial potential energy if you get the final value minus the initial value so you have the delta potential energy the change and the, the sign minus here you rewrite it so you have a relationship between the work and the potential energy remember we just consider the uh, gravitational forces and the gravitational forces is a conservative forces because it just depends on distance. The work on it, calculate, when you calculate the work on it, just depends on the distance only. 
So here the relationship between the work and the potential energy in a system just contains uh, conservative forces. Uh, work equal uh, minus delta U. Here is the definition of delta U. See here is the, um, uh, you can pick up it. See, it's just a constant follow the potential energy. If you pick up uh, potential energy at the heat, at, uh, equal zero when R equal infinity. So here you write zero, here you write infinity, so C equal zero. So C just a constant. So in this video, uh, I um, want to make some conclusions. The first one, the definition of potential energy. In uh, uh, this case, gravitational forces. So potential energy defined by this formula and the relationship between the potential energy and the work in the system, uh, which contains only uh, conservative forces. This one relationship between them. So here, uh, some example here. Suppose that I have uh, uh, two paths. Two paths. The first one is A from one to two. The second one B from one to two. You take a look on this case. You see that the work uh, on the path A equal the work on the path B because the initial position of A and B is the same and the final position of A and B is the same. If the system if this system just contains the conservative forces, for example the um, gravitational forces, so we can calculate the work like this one. So you see uh, the final position the same A and B. The initial position here the same A and B. So when here, G, capital M and M uh, are constant. So if they are constant and R2 equals to R1, so this one will be zero. Next, the second example. If uh, the system just contains the conservative forces, so when the object move a close line, so the work on this closed line equals zero because the initial position and the final position is the same. And next, here I want to summarize uh, uh, something related to potential energy. So here is the potential energy. Back to this one. The potential energy, if the system contains only conservative forces, so the work, uh, a relationship between work and potential energy like this. Take a look on this summary. You can see here, a work of the system like this. You see, one way to calculate the work, second way to calculate the work, third way to calculate the work. Based on the power, you also can calculate the work. So they are totally four uh, ways to calculate the work. You take a look on the given, what do you have to calculate it? For example, if you have force and distance, so you apply this formula. You have uh, initial and final uh, velocity, so you apply this formula. You have uh, some sign like this. You have uh, um, conservative forces and the potential energy, so you apply this one. And in case that from given you have a power uh, and time, so you apply this formula to calculate the work. Now we talk about the mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy. Let's consider the case when uh, on the system applied uh, conservative forces and non-conservative forces. So the second law, write by this way, M A equal F conservative plus F non-conservative. Let's consider the uh, kinetic work kinetic theorem. So here is the change of kinetic energy, delta K. Delta K equal K2 minus K1. So this one is the work equal the work on the system. In another word, 
the in another words the work on the system you can calculate the work due to the conservative folks here plus the work due to the non-conservative forces here so this one the uh, change of kinetic energy equal the work of the system like this in another way based on the work due to, uh, due to the conservative forces so we have a relationship between that work and the potential energy like this that means the work due to the conservative forces equal minus delta u so now we get the first equation minus the second equation we have this formula here k2 minus k1 here we rewrite it oh actually we don't minus them we soup we put the f uh, the work due to the conservative forces here instead of um, this one we write u1 minus u2 here so we have uh, this equation now we change from this to that from this to that so you have k2 plus k u2 so kinetic energy uh, at the second position plus potential energy at the second position so you have a mechanical energy at the second position minus here k1 here uh, plus u1 here so you see you have a kinetic energy at the initial position plus potential energy at the initial position so you have a mechanical energy at the initial position so you get the mechanical energy at the final position minus the initial mechanical energy so you have the work due to the non-conservative forces so here conclusion the mechanical energy equal the kinetic energy plus uh, potential energy in case uh, on the system we have a conservative forces and non-conservative forces so the change of mechanical energy equal the work due to the non-conservative forces based on this you see if on the system you don't have a non-conservative forces so you don't have this work that means here will be zero here will be zero that means the final mechanical energy equal the initial mechanical energy in this case we say that conserv uh, conservation of mechanical energy here here if on the system you don't have a non-conservative forces that means say you don't have uh, the work due to non-conservative forces that means that this equation equals zero that means that uh, uh, mechanical energy of, at the second position equal mechanical energy at the initial position that means the uh, energy is conserved or we or we have a conservation of mechanical energy so here i uh, conclude something uh, about the the slide i just showed you here if you uh, sum the kinetic energy with the potential energy in the system just contains uh, conservative forces so you have a mechanical energy but if system contains uh, a non-conservative forces so the change of mechanical energy equal the work due to non-conservative forces remember if the system just contains uh, conservative forces so the mechanical energy is conserved I mean at any position during the uh, the initial position to the second position the kinetic energy or uh, potential energy can be changed but the total I mean the mechanical energy is all the way constant next I will show the relationship between the forks and the potential energy and this this is an important formula I suppose that I, I consider the forks in XYZ system coordinate I is the unit vector along the OX J is the unit vector along the OY K is the unit vector along the OZ and the distance also in this system coordinate 
If I want to calculate the work, I get the fox time to the distance like this. When I do this uh, step, so I have the result like this. Remember, fox we consider here is a non-conservative foxes. In uh, another way, I also have a relationship between the work and the potential energy when the system contains only, con non -con uh, only conservative foxes. Here is the relationship. So instead of du, I can write uh, the du over dx and dx here, dx here, plus du over dy, dy here, du over dz. This one is the, um, the component along the ox, oy, oz, and this one is the whole system. So actually this one is the same because dx here and dx here, dy here, dy here you nagle it, nagle it, nagle it. So when you sum them, so this one is the total du, du is no more. So I have a two formula for work. This one, this formula based on the force and distance. This formula based on the potential energy. Now I compare them. So here, dx, dx. So before dx, so I have fx. That means this one is fx. Don't forget the minus here. Here is fx. Here dy, here dy. So before dy, we have a fy. So that means this one is fy. And don't forget the minus here. I rewrite it here. And the same for dz, we have this wheel, this component. So in another way to write this, we can write by this way. Vector f equal minus uh, grad u, where u is a potential energy. So we can rewrite the grad by this way, by this way. And grad, we, in another word, we can call a gradient operator. So conclusion to this video. Uh, here is a important one. The relationship between the potential energy and the force in the system which contains uh, only conservative forces. Where, uh, in another way to write this one. So you write fx equal minus dx over du. fy equal, this one is fx, don't forget the minus, fy and fz. Um, Thank you for listening.